Let us bow for the prayer for illumination. Mighty Creator, Heavenly Parent, we pray that your Holy Spirit will fill this place and will fill each of us this day to inspire, yes, even to challenge us anew. May our ears, minds, and hearts be receptive to the word we hear read and proclaimed. We humbly ask you to open those gates of righteousness that we may enter in to rejoice and be glad on this special day. In the name, name of Christ our Savior, we pray. And as brothers and sisters in Christ, let us all say, Amen. Amen. I didn't hear you. Amen. That's very good. The Old Testament lesson this morning is... Um, from Psalm 118, verses 17 through 24. I shall not die, but I shall live, and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has punished me severely, but he did not give me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. And if you'd like to say that last verse with me, we said it earlier. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the word of God. For we, his people, let us rejoice and be glad. And all God's people said amen. This Sunday, we conclude the last of the I am statements. I am the gate. I am the door. It's from the 10th chapter, and you might recognize part of it because we preached on this uh, three or four weeks ago, the Good Shepherd. But this is the beginning of our text, John chapter 10, verses 1 through, I believe, 11. Listen now for the word of the Lord. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and he leads them out. And when he has brought out all of his own, he goes ahead of them and the sheep, they follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of the stranger. Jesus uses the figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. And all who come before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep, they did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and who will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal, to kill, and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. This is the word of the Lord. I am the gate. What does this all mean? How many of you know what a shoe pegger is? How many of you know what an iceman is? How many of you know what a farrier is? I better see a couple hands on that one. Yes. 
What are we getting here? We're getting here to the fact that there are a lot of occupations that used to be well known and who are no longer known. You know, shoe pegger is a person that fixes shoes. They nailed, that's why they're called a shoe pegger, because they nailed nails into the shoes. An ice man, of course, took, brought ice to your refrigerator. That's what kept your ice box cold. The reason I bring that up is that we need a little background to understand what's going on here. I'm not often, how many of us have sheep? Yeah. And if we do have sheep, we have a very different understanding of what it means to be a shepherd in an American context than in a Middle Eastern context. But oh, to understand this, we have to understand the context of the good shepherd. And why does Jesus use this metaphor? Why does he, well, because just in the last chapter, the, Jesus had healed a blind man. And the Pharisees are coming in and they're trying to make this sound as if Jesus is not from God but from a demon. That it's because he has this demon that he has the power to heal. And Jesus is saying, no, 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 no. This question of is Jesus from God or not? Is he a prophet or not? Is he Messiah or not? He wants to make sure it's answered very, very clearly. So he uses the metaphor of the shepherd. And for those of us who know the Old Testament, we know why he did it. Because in the Old Testament, God talks about himself as the good shepherd in about five or six different texts. And particularly in Ezekiel, in the 34th chapter, in the 23rd verse, he says, I am the good shepherd, but I will place my sheep in the hands of another shepherd. They will ten, he will tend them. He will protect and save. Did you know that the earliest Israelite kings were called shepherds? The, the role of the king wasn't for power. It was to protect and to tend. There are two ways that they tended their sheep. The first one was the sheep gate. And if you can see from the pictures... There are a lot of sheep there. The first sheep gate was a communal sheep gate. At the end of the night, the shepherds brought all of their sheep from all the different flocks, and they put them in one sheepfold. And they had somebody gatekeep. Somebody watched that all night long. The rest of the shepherds, they went home. They got a good night's sleep, and they came back in the morning. Now, you can imagine that that could be a problem, figuring out which one of those are your sheep except that sheep only respond to the voice of the shepherd. And when the sheep that are in this sheepfold hear the voice of their shepherd, an amazing thing happens. It looks like, uh, it looks like waves of sheep and they start moving. And one moves toward their shepherd and the other moves toward their shepherd and pretty soon just the voice of the shepherd the sheep have separated themselves and are ready for the day I have a video here I would like you to listen to that shows what I mean One more time. Oh, one is one. Oh my God! Woo! 
question is, for the, for the blind man, he finally found somebody that heard and listened to his pain, who understood his needs, and actually was able to provide and save him. We're a lot like sheep, you know. There's a futility when we try to save ourselves and try to fix ourselves. This sheep's name is Chris. Not anything to do with Chris in the, in the balcony, but uh, this one's Chris. Chris was lost for a number of years in Australia, and one day somebody found him, and this is Chris's state. He's had nobody to tend him. He's had nobody to care for him. And the bad news for a sheep is that when you don't have somebody who was able to shear you, it can, your wool can actually kill you. This is Chris, and when he was sheared, they took off 89 pounds of wool. 18 inches of wool. The average amount that a sheep gives up when it's sheared is 11 pounds. Chris was in a bad way. He needed to know that the good shepherd would tend for him. He needed to know that he was cared for. The blind man is the same, and we're all the same, aren't we? I think the world is very anxious because we don't know about the good shepherd. Or if we know about the good shepherd, we're like sheep and we forget. We need to constantly be hearing the voice of the shepherd of Jesus calling us because he does call us. He calls us all the time. And we go astray when we forget to listen for his voice. There's another sheepfold, and that's this one. This is a sheepfold that happens later in the year when the rains are, are, have stopped. Did you know that 10 months out of the year, there's no rain in Israel? And because of that, after a while, the, the sheep have eaten up all of the good grass around the town, and they have to go further and further out to feed. And it's in those months that this is the sheepfold. And it's one where, if you notice, there's a, a, rock, um, a rock wall around but there's a hole for the sheep to go in and to come out of. And do you notice who is in front of that hole? Oops, wrong one. It's the good shepherd. Whoops. It's the good shepherd, isn't it? The shepherd is the entry and the exit point for the sheep. He leads them in, he protects them, and he leads them out. He literally places his body in front of the entrance. In other words, if you're going to get my sheep, you're going to have to go over me. Because here's the reality of sheep. If that door is left open and a predator gets in, the sheep, they freeze. They don't run, they freeze. And they freeze together. And because of that, you can lose an entire herd to one predator. Jesus placed himself in front of the gate, in front of where his people were housed, so that the predator of sin could not get in. 
Jesus' death on the cross is literally the good shepherd in front of the gate. Friends, I don't know about you, but when I was in Africa one night, I was in a building that didn't have a door. And I have to tell you, I started pushing things in front of the door. It's very frightening to be asleep, to be vulnerable, and to know that there's an opening where predators can come and harm. But Jesus says, I stand at that door. I will protect you. That's why he is the door. And what does it go on to say? It goes on to say the sheep have abundance of life because of this. Do you catch it? As the sheep of Christ, as those who belong to him, as those who hear his voice and are able to respond, as those who know that he will protect us with his life, when we are in that place, when we're living in that reality, the anxieties of life subside. I didn't say the problems. I said the anxieties of life subside. Because we know, we know that our good shepherd is leading us, protecting us, guiding us, providing for us. It's only when we, like sheep, go astray, like, well, poor Chris. <laughs> it's only when that happens that we become anxious, and our culture is so anxious right now. Our culture so needs to know that the Good Shepherd is providing for us and caring for us. Jesus said, I am the gate. When we know that, we know and we can respond to his voice alone because it's the voice of love. When we know that, we can be faithful in protection. We know that he's providing for us. And we can do things that we couldn't imagine because we know that he will provide. And finally, entering through his gate brings freedom. Bad things still happen, but we know that he is taking care of everything. But when we rely on ourselves, <laughs> we're on a road to anxiety and fear and a death of the soul. Enter into the freedom of Jesus Christ, the gate. Amen. Amen. Friends, I have a lovely song that I'd like to, us to sing, but let's just do the four, first and the fourth verse. No, no, the first and the third verse. The first and the third verse. It's an insert in your bulletin. I'm going to sing it through. If you'd like to join me, you can do that. But if you join me then in the third verse, uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful song.